first Miami conference I went to was in 1987. I was a fourth year surgery resident. Uh, the meeting was quite small then. There were about 60 or 80 registrants and I, and I met Dr. Osman and his wife and um, I had decided at that point to pursue a career in breast cancer. And so over the next 20 something years, I've been to this meeting about 14 or 15 times. Um, and I've really come to rely on this meeting uh, for my own clinical updates. Um, now that I'm assuming a leadership role in the Miami Brass Conference, um, I see this conference as fulfilling two core functions for our registrants. One is obvious. One is an update. What's new? What's different? What are the new studies? What does the data show? I think the format that Dan Osmond created 29 years ago of these ultra short format talks is fabulous because the audience can see such a panorama of information across a morning or an afternoon session. These talks are much harder for the speakers to put together. It's hard to distill uh, our thoughts down, but it's great for the audience. And I really think that what Dr. Osmond did 29 years ago was so prescient today because the format has not wavered in 29 years. The second reason doctors come to this conference is to validate what they're doing today. They want to know that their approach to breast cancer is mainstream. It's what their colleagues do. And so a few years ago when we added audience participation and we could survey the audience, how do you handle margins? How do you handle DCIS? How do you handle stage three breast cancer? They could compare themselves to their colleagues. So I think those are the two things that make this America's best clinical breast cancer meeting. And I think that I think that's uh, a real tribute to Dr. Osmond and his vision.